I left Luxembourg in 1969. Uh, and then I went back there again in 1971. In that time, I went to a studio in Wardour Street called Studio G. It was basically a music advisory service to films and various such things. So I was recording lots of music, which eventually ended up on film in cinemas and things like that. Um, one of them uh, particularly was a piece of music that sounded very much like uh, Moonlight Serenade and it's been used in various... I would like a quid for every time I've heard it come up on television in various films. It's very much like Moonlight Serenade, but it was specially composed, which I did the recording of. And one of the guys at Studio G was Andre Jackerman, uh, which probably may not mean a lot to a lot of people, but he means the world to me, because he was basically the office boy runner type thing at Studio G. And he was very interested in starting an industry in the business. So he asked me all tips about how I do recording and why do I do this and why do I do that. So I used to show him and tell him. And he said he's got a group, can he bring them in one day to record so he can learn from it with me looking over his shoulder. So I said, yes, OK. So we did that. And uh, then uh, I left. Uh, Studio G after a couple of years and then went back to Radio Luxembourg because they headhunted me to run the London studios as the head honcho because the previous chief engineer had left to set up another studio uh, and at that time uh, Andre came along to see me although we were still in regular touch and he said I've got this idea here he said um, I've been doing some work with Mike Palin of Monty Python and uh, they were very unhappy with their last album and wondered if they could talk to you to see if there's anything you could do to make it better and I said well okay so he arranged a meeting and Mike Palin and Andre came along and we chatted played little bits of the album and I said well I said they've basically treated it like a television program there's no sense of timing the sound effects are off microphone, the voices are off microphone. And he said, well, do you think you can do any better? I said, I know damn well I can do better than that. And he said, well, would you do this? And I said, well, you've got to remember, I'm doing programmes for the radio station as well, so it's a question of fitting it in as and when. When we started recording the Pythons for previous album, uh, the thing to know about them is that they produced themselves. They were their own producers and very often are not changing their mind about different bits and going back and doing it. So I suppose you could say that Andre and me were sort of honorary producers without the title because we were the ones that were sort of keeping their feet on the ground and saying, uh, saying um, because if there was something that I was unhappy about, I'd say, can we do that again because of so-and-so, because of this, because of that? They'd say, yeah, OK. And they'd go ahead and they'd do it again. I'd say, that's fine, thank you very much. And I'll put little markings on my script, whether take five or take six or insert. Uh, and that's the way we went. It was the first time I'd ever experienced anything like that without having a producer sitting by my side who was producing a record, you know, they were all producing themselves. Very, very strange. I've been called upon to do many sorts of sound effects in my time, but I think nothing more strange than farts. Uh, and I've done my fair share of those for the Python albums, and I must hasten to add, with my mouth. Watch my lips. <laughs> so uh, that was uh, great fun to do. But I think the man that takes the cake must be Mike Palin because he did the most marvellous effect for us of a magnificent fart where he also took a glass of water, um, put it in his mouth and squelched and squidged it back into the glass with me putting heavy reverb on it. And I, we all fell about. That was hilarious. So perhaps... Instead of getting another badge, maybe I ought to make him a badge saying for the most magnificent farter of all time. When we were finished recording, uh, all the boys came into the studio and said, thanks Al, bye-bye, see you, see you, see you. All of a sudden, 
After all this noise, there was dead silence. There was just me and myself. <laughs> and I had all these tapes to sort out. They had done their bit. It was now up to me to do my bit. And I spent ages and ages editing and cutting it around, uh, adding sound effects, taking away sound effects. And then uh, after I completed uh, the album, all, the, all this is on tape, they came back and said, no, we don't want like the order of it. We're going to change the order of it. So I had to get all the sticky tape and unglue it and put a tape here, put a tape there uh, and cut it all together again in a different order until they said, yeah, that's fine. And they went ahead to the disc cutter, whose name was Georgie Peckham, uh, and cut it all together. Oh, I remember with this razor blade and sticky tape I had and winding tape backwards and forwards, my fingernails, my fingers were seeping with blood at the end uh, because the skin had worn so thin and they were a bit sore. <laughs> but however, in the, for the sake of art and showbiz folks, uh, it was done and it happened. And as I say, I got a gold disc for it. <laughs>